Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm gonna check the XUAV Mini F4 flight tower. There's also an F3 version. This is an all-in-one flight controller that has an ESC, PDB, flight controller and also a video transmitter. Inside the box we're getting these two XUV cool stickers. The flight controller is an F4 Omnibus flight controller. The 4-in-1 ESC board is a 20 ampere BLLES D-Shot compatible board. And we also get in the VTX which has a selectable power output of 25, 100 and 200 milliwatts. We also get in this bag with this IPX antenna which is connected to the VTX and all the spacers that are needed including this useful rubber o-rings. We're also getting this 220 microfarads capacitor and if you choose to use it, which I think I'm going to use it by the way, you will need to solder the longer leg to the plus and the shorter leg to the ground pad. In this package you're not getting any JST or X30 connectors so you will have to buy your own one. Now I haven't yet decided which frame I'm going to use this flight controller with but I'm going to quickly connect everything up and then we can see how it compares to the Ishin Mini Cube and also to the AGLRC all-in-one controller. So I finished connecting everything up. I've decided to solder the capacitor later when I'm going to use it for an actual build. I've also connected the IPX connector of the antenna and I soldered this JST connector in order to power it up. This flight controller supports between 2 to 4S LiPo batteries. So let's power it up and see that everything is working correctly. So the board powers up. Everything is working. You can see the ESC also had a light that indicates that it's working. We have the flight controller that is blinking and on the top we have this VTX. In order to configure the band and channel you will have to use this button over here and these three indicators are going to let us know what is the band channel and output power that we're using. The right one indicates the channel, then the middle one indicates the band and the left one indicates the output power. Setting up the channel is done by pressing this button until the blue indicator is going to start flashing. Then it can cycle between 1 to 8 by short pressing it. So for example now it flashes twice which means we are on channel 2. Setting up the band is done also in a similar way. You have to long press it until the green indicator flashes. Then you can cycle between one flash stands for A. Then you have B, E, F, H and R. R is six times that it flashes. In total you have 48 combinations which stand for 48 channels. Setting up the power is done by long pressing this button until the red LED flashes. Then when it flashes once it stands for 25 milliwatt, twice for 100 milliwatts and three times for 200 milliwatts. I got it to work and I want to show you how to make sure you are using the correct band channel and power output. So once you plug it you're going to see that these buttons are going to flash together. So now they flash together for three times. Then the right one flashed for additional four times. One times together with the middle LED indicator which indicates that the blue indicator flashed total times of seven times. So the channel is seven. The middle indicator flashed four times meaning we are using the F band and the strength indicator flashed three times which means now we are using 200 milliwatts. Now let me tell you something. This is really hard to configure and I really wish that XUV which seems like they build a very high quality products used something like that which is implemented as on the AGLRC board. So it's pretty compact and just adding this LED screen I don't think it adds much weight to this tower but we have to remember that we don't change channels that often and once you set it up it will take you probably five minutes or so and maybe it will burn your hands because it gets really hot 
after that you're going to be fine but still this is much nicer and much better. The total weight of this flight tower is 17.88 grams. If we add in the capacitor, it weighs 19.48 grams. Just as a comparison, the weight of the Ishin Mini Cube is 13.88 grams, but you have to remember that this one doesn't have a VTX, but it does have a receiver on top. The weight of the HGLC tower is 12.35 grams without the spacers, but I still think it's going to be lighter than the XUV Mini F4 tower. Let me guide you through the connectors of this flight controller. On the middle we have the receiver connector, the right pin is the ground, then the 5 volts RC in, and on the left we have a 3.3 volts output, so you can plug your DSM or DSMX receiver. The bottom connector is the LED and the buzzer connector. They didn't include a built-in buzzer in this flight controller, which I think maybe they should have considered it, especially because you are going to need a buzzer and a built-in one can save you some soldering work and make your build even cleaner. On the front, we have the last connector, which is the camera connector. The right pin is the five volt, then ground, video, and audio connector. I've just received three frames that I bought from Tomoquads, the Sonic, the Trident, and also the Visting. I'm going to use these two flight controllers in two of them, and maybe I'm going to use the Mini Cube also in the other ones. I still haven't decided which setup I'm going to use, but soon I will be able to test it out and tell you which flight controller, in my opinion, is the easiest and the best to work with. I hope you enjoyed this video and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this flight controller and even these two flight controllers, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.